April 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapters 18 and 19 from the Old Testament. The entire Israelite community assembled at Shiloh, and there they set up the tent of meeting. Though they had subdued the land, seven Israelite tribes had not been assigned their allotted land. So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long do you intend to put off occupying the land the Lord God of your ancestors has given you? Pick three men from each tribe. I will send them out to walk through the land and make a map of it for me. Divide it into seven regions. Judah will stay in its territory in the south, and the family of Joseph in its territory in the north. But as for you, map out the land into seven regions and bring it to me. I will draw lots for you here before the Lord our God. But the Levites will not have an allotted portion among you, for their inheritance is to serve the Lord. Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received their allotted land, east of the Jordan, which Moses the Lord's servant assigned them. When the men started out, Joshua told those going to map out the land, Go, walk through the land, map it out, and return to me. Then I will draw lots for you before the Lord here in Shiloh. The men journeyed through the land and mapped it and its cities out into seven regions on a scroll. Then they came to Joshua at the camp in Shiloh. Joshua drew lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord and divided the land among the Israelites according to their allotted portions. The first lot belonged to the tribe of Benjamin by its clans. Their allotted territory was between Judah and Joseph. Their northern border started at the Jordan, went up to the slope of Jericho on the north, ascended westward to the hill country, and extended to the desert of beth Aven. It then crossed from there to Luz, to the slope of Luz to the south, that is Bethel, and descended to Atheroth Adar, located on the hill that is south of lower beth Haran. It then turned on the west side southward from the hill near beth Haran on the south and extended to Kiriath Baal, that is, Kiriath Jerim, a city belonging to the tribe of Judah. This is the western border. The southern side started on the edge of Kiriath Jerim and extended westward to the springs of the waters of Nephtoah. The border then descended to the edge of the hill country near the valley of Ben-Hinnom, located in the valley of the Rephaites to the north. It descended through the valley of Hinnom to the slope of the Jebusites to the south, and then down to En-Rogel. It went northward, extending to En-Shemesh and Galilath, opposite the pass of Adamon, and descended to the stone of Bohan's son of Reuben. It crossed to the slope in front of the Arabah to the north and descended into the Arabah. It then crossed to the slope of Beth Hagla to the north and ended at the northern tip of the Salt Sea at the mouth of the Jordan River. This was the southern border. The Jordan River borders it on the east. These were the borders of the land assigned to the tribe of Benjamin by its clans. These cities belong to the tribe of Benjamin by its clans, Jericho, Beth Hagla, Emek Kizes, Beth Arabah, Zemaraim, Bethel, Avim, Para, Ophra, Kephra Ammonai, Ophni, and Geba, a total of 12 cities and their towns, Gibeon, Ramah, Biraroth, Mizpah, Kephira, Moza, Recom, Irpil, Terala, Zila, Haleph, the Jebusite city that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, and Kiriath, a total of 14 cities and their towns. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Benjamin by its clans. The second lot belonged to the tribe of Simeon by its clans. Their assigned land included Beersheba, Molada, Hazer Shuel, Bela, Ezem, Eltolad, Bethel, 
Horma, Zikleg, Beth Markaboth, Hazer Susa, Beth Labaoth, and Sher Yuhun, a total of 13 cities and their towns, Ain, Rimen, Ether, and Asian, a total of four cities and their towns, as well as all the towns around these cities as far as Baalath Beer, Ramah of the Negev. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Simeon by its clans. Simeon's assigned land was taken from Judah's allotted portion, for Judah's territory was too large for them, so Simeon was assigned land within Judah. The third lot belonged to the tribe of Zebulun by its clans. The border of their territory extended to Sarid. Their border went up westward to Maralah and touched Dabasheth and the valley near Jokneam. From Sarid it turned eastward to the terry of Kisloth Tabor, extended to Dabriath, and went up to Japhia. From there it crossed eastward to Gath Hefer and Eth Kazan, and extended to Rimen, turning toward Nia. It then turned on the north to Hanathan and ended at the valley of Iphath El. Their territory included Kata, Nehalal, Shimron, Idalah, and Bethlehem, and all they had twelve cities and their towns. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Zebulun by its clans, including these cities and their towns. The fourth lot belonged to the tribe of Issachar by its clans. Their assigned land included Jezreel, Kasoloth, Shunem, Hafraim, Shion, Anaharehath, Rabbath, Kishion, Ebiz, Remoth, and Ganim, and Hadah, and Beth Pezez. Their border touched Tabor, Shehazima, and Beth Shemesh, and ended at the Jordan. They had sixteen cities in their towns. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Issachar by its clans, including the cities and their towns. The fifth lot belonged to the tribe of Asher by its clans. Their territory included Helkath, Halai, Beton, Akshath, Alamalek, Amad, and Mishal. Their border touched Carmel to the west and Shihor Libnath. It turned eastward toward Beth Dagon, touched Zebulun and the valley of Iftael to the north, as well as the valley of Emek and Neiel, and extended to Cable on the north, and on to Ebron, Rehob, Haman, and Cana, as far as Greater Sidon. It then turned toward Ramah, as far as the fortified city of Tyre, turned to Hosa, and ended at the sea near Habel, Axib, Uma, Aphek, and Rehob. In all they had twenty-two cities in their towns. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Asher by its clans including these cities and their towns. The sixth lot belonged to the tribe of Naphtali by its clans. Their border started at Helif and the Oak of Zaanaim, went to Adamai Nekeb, Jabneel, and on to Lakum, and ended at the Jordan River. It turned westward to Asnoth Tabor, extended from there to Hukok, touched Zebulun on the south and Asher on the west, and the Jordan on the east. The fortified cities included Zidim, Zir, Hamath, Rakath, Kinnereth, Adama, Ramah, Hazar, Kadesh, Edrei, and Hazor, Euron, Migdal, Horam, Bethanath, and Beth Shemesh. In all, they had nineteen cities and their towns. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Naphtali by its clans, including the cities and their towns. The seventh lot belonged to the tribe of Dan by its clans. Their assigned land included Zorah, Eshtael, Ir Shemesh, 
Shealabin, Ajalon, Ithla, Elon, Timna, Ekron, Eltaka, Gibbethon, Baalath, Jehud, Beni Birak, Gathramon, the waters of Jarkon, and Rakon, including the territory in front of Joppa. The Danites failed to conquer their territory, so they went up and fought with Lashem and captured it. They put the sword to it, took possession of it, and lived in it. They renamed it Dan after their ancestor. This was the land assigned to the tribe of Dan by its clans, including these cities and their towns. When they finished dividing the land into its regions, the Israelites gave Joshua, son of Nun, some land. As the Lord had instructed, they gave him the city he requested, Timnath Sarah in the Ephraimite hill country. He built up the city and lived in it. These are the land assignments which Eliezer the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the Israelite tribal leaders made by drawing lots in Shiloh before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. So they finished dividing up the land. God, it was interesting right before I was getting ready to record uh, today's Old Testament reading. I had a, a short conversation with a friend of mine about the recordings. And I said, oh yeah, today's taking me about two hours to record. And um, she asked why. And I said, well, and if she could help, which was really sweet. Um, I said, well, if you take a look at some of these these chapters in Joshua, they're just filled with all these places that we don't normally talk about. Um, even the the Bethlehem in here is not the Bethlehem we know of. It's a completely different Bethlehem. And so, so one, these are all new. A lot of these are new to me. How to say them, more importantly, is new to me. And so every single one I have to look up, uh, write down the phonetic spelling, and then practice it. And so it takes me a couple hours um, when we do these uh, specific readings to actually get them up on the site. And as I've been doing them and, and knowing how long it's taking me to look up uh, just two chapters in the Bible and how to say things and uh, understand a little bit more about what is there and what isn't there and, and where it was located, I got to thinking about other things we do that with in the Bible, that when we come to these long um, historical information about towns, we tend to skip over those. Or, or when we come to the list of names of people, especially genealogy list uh, with names that aren't easy to pronounce for us, we kind of gloss over all those. We glance at them, we kind of gloss over them. And I think about what else we do that to in the Bible. Do we just constantly go to the Bible verses that make us feel good? Um, that lift us up, that, that nourish us? Nothing that is wrong with that. But if that's all we do, then our diet of the Bible is, is incredibly one-sided. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not recommending God that somebody sit down and spend two hours looking up all these names to <laughs> definitely say them. But I do pray, God, that, that we will dig in deeper than the surface of your word. We are not called to live a surface life for you or a glossed over life for you. We are called to live in deep relationships, not only with you, but with others around us, uh, sharing the love that you have for us. And I'm not sure how we can do that if we just have a surface relationship with your word that teaches us how to live this life. God, I pray today that, that everyone listening will just take a moment and look up some of the things in the Bible that they're not used to paying attention to. Whether it's names of cities, uh, they can definitely look up tomorrow's reading uh, because Joshua goes on to name a bunch more cities I'm going to have to look up. Um, or it's a genealogy list or um, look at some uh, chapters in the Bible that aren't your normal go-to ones. I know Ezekiel for a lot of people is a normal I'm not even going to try and go to Ezekiel. But Ezekiel is actually kind of fascinating. Um, so today I, I just encourage everyone, God, with your help, to go out and read something that they don't normally read. Or try and understand something that maybe 
has been uh, something they've glossed over before because it wasn't a concept that, that they really understood. And I just ask before they do that, that they pray to you that you will open up their hearts and their minds to whatever it is that you want them to learn out of that. Whether it's a name of a place um, or that the fact that there's a couple Bethlehems uh, hanging around in that area <laughs> or the name of somebody who's in the Bible or a specific Bible verse or chapter uh, that's been elusive to them that, that you will just show them what it is that you want them to know God I want to live in a deep relationship with you I don't want anything that surface my worldly life here existed for 20 some odd years going on almost three dozen sorry going on almost two dozen years uh, of surface relationships I am so tired of those <sighs> they're such worldly relationships I want a deep relationship with you I want a deep relationship with those I'm discipling and and helping move forward in a path towards you God help us with this this is not usually what we're taught to do in Bible study but this is where it gets really exciting this is where uh, the hard work really starts to pay off and I know at some point the hard work of knowing the names of all these places I know it'll pay off at some point um, God, I just love you for your word. I know that every single piece of it, including every single um, comma, every single period, every single word and phrase in here was meant for us at different times of our lives for different situations. And I just ask that you help us apply the totality of it, not just the handpicked pieces that we're comfortable with. God, in your amazing name, in your son's name, I pray. Amen. <music>